Hello, this is lesson six of Earth Changing Climate. This is a unit for sixth grade scientists, and our lesson today is titled Investigating Paths of Energy. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in this lesson is trying to figure out what happens to Earth's surface when the global average temperature increases and why that is even happening. And so having someone to talk to you about your ideas will help you understand things better, will help you figure things out. But if you don't have someone nearby that you can talk to about your ideas, then having something to jot them down, like a piece of paper or maybe something to type your ideas down is gonna help you with this lesson. We're also going to be using the Earth's Changing Climate Sim from Amplify Science. And so let's take a look at what we're going to be investigating today. So during all this research that you've been doing as a student climatologist, you have figured out so many things. You have figured out that the Earth's surface ice has been decreasing over the last century or so. We've been keeping track of this since about 1880, and we looked at graphs that showed how Earth's ice has been decreasing. We looked at some satellite photos that were taken at the ice's like peak time every summer, and taken each summer to get data over many years. And we've also seen that the global average temperature has been increasing. Now, as all of that has been happening, we've also closely monitored the different gases that are in Earth's surface, the trace gases like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, methane. And as we looked at all of those gases, we saw that carbon dioxide and methane have been increasing at the same rate that our temperature has been increasing. And so we looked at the sim and we increased those gases to see how they affect the Earth's surface, ice, and also the global average temperature. And so we've come to this understanding that they are affecting it, but we don't know why. Like what is it specifically about carbon dioxide gas that makes more energy stay in Earth's system than be able to exit. And when more energy is entering Earth's system than is exiting it, just like we can see in these pictures here, when more energy is entering Earth's system, the global average temperature goes up, the ice on the Earth's surface starts to, get, to, starts to melt. And so the investigation question that we're gonna look at today is why? Why does the increase in carbon dioxide or methane result? in more energy entering than exiting. And so this is what we're going to really be digging into. And the, the way we're gonna do this is by going onto the sim and isolating one individual arrow of energy and watch what happens as it interacts with carbon dioxide or methane gas in Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so let me explain the directions for that because they're a little bit tricky. So in this picture that you can see, there is a yellow energy arrow that was on its way out of Earth's system and it got redirected back to the surface where likely it will get reabsorbed by Earth's surface. And so what, what's happening here? This is an energy arrow interaction with gas and we're gonna see what the different settings on the sim allow that to happen. So what's happening when energy interacts with carbon dioxide or methane? And so the directions are a little complex, so let me walk you through them, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it on the sim. But the most important thing is to be patient because sometimes it takes a while for you to capture one of these energy arrows interacting with the gas, but it is happening, I promise. So the first thing you wanna do is set the gas you're investigating, whether it's carbon dioxide or methane, all the way to maximum, so 500 parts per million. And then the other gases in the sim, you wanna to set to zero, because we don't want any of those gas molecules to interact with our energy arrows. And then there's a little eye icon that you can press and it will show you the gases that you're investigating. And then choose an energy arrow that's moving away from Earth. And then if you press the arrow, then you can actually activate its tracking function, which, let, which lets you be able to see what its pathway is, whether it changes or stays the same. And, oh, the one piece of advice that I would tell you, and this is important, is if you press pause before trying to um, select one of the arrows that will help, if it's playing and you're trying to grab an arrow, it's really difficult to do. So then press play and observe what happens. And if your energy arrow leaves Earth's system, just choose a new one. And I have to tell you that sometimes it takes 
10 tries before you can capture one. So just be patient. This is going to take some time. So call a friend, do it together, or just kind of give yourself a chunk of time while you're doing this lesson to just really explore the sim. It's a fun one. So let's, let's just really get into this. So if your energy arrow actually interacts with the gas, and you'll know that happens because the gas will have a little yellow circle around it to show that it's interacting with the energy arrow. So when you see one of those little circles pop up, you know that it's interacted with the gas. So then just keep watching it and see what happens. Does it go back to Earth's surface? Is it does it still exit Earth's system? Like what is going on? Try to capture at least three interactions to show what you're seeing. And then reset and investigate the other gas. The two gases we're investigating are carbon dioxide and methane. And once you do that, you'll have something that looks sort of like, like this, hopefully, we'll see. But um, I think you should draw a picture of it just to show. So just draw like a quick little sketch of Earth's surface on your piece of paper and then maybe like a dotted line above it to show the atmosphere and the boundary between outer space and the atmosphere. Just a simple sketch. And then draw your three arrows that are interacting with gas. Now you might have to actually select more than three, it's unlikely that you'll be lucky on the first three arrows that you select, but just keep trying until you've got three methane and three carbon dioxide. And then we'll explore our results a little bit together. Okay, so before you go off and do that, let me just show you one. It will help you as you are going through this activity. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open the sim, which you can do really easily by going to seattleschools.org and then clicking on the Clever portal, which you can go to just from the phone, the home screen, or you can click on the student family portal and then find the Clever portal in there. Log in with your username and password. If, you don't, if you're not a sixth grader in Seattle schools and don't have access to the Earth's Changing Climate Sim, that's okay, that's okay because we're going to talk about it here and you'll get to see some screenshots of what, what we discovered together. So Earth's Changing Climate Sim, select that from the science apps and I will open it right now and let's kind of do this together. Okay, so I was playing with this a little bit so I'm just going to reset it. And yes, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select which one of these two gases we want to explore. And I say we just start with carbon dioxide because it's at the top. So the other gases in the sim we want to set to zero. So I'm going to move these all down to zero. And then I'm going to press the I icon for carbon dioxide. And what you'll notice is that all these little gray dots just appeared. And as I move it up to 500 parts per million, you can see that more and more and more molecules of carbon dioxide have appeared. And we know that that's been happening over the last century or so in our atmosphere. And we know that it's affecting the global average temperature and the amount of ice on Earth's surface. But in this explore exploration, hopefully we'll see why is that happening? Okay, so lots of times I encourage you to increase the time but I think for this activity it's better actually just to leave it at one time but before we start I just want to show you one thing I am going to move it up to times two just so that it can go fast and I want you to notice that popping up in the atmosphere are all these little yellow dots that is every single time that an energy arrow is interacting with a carbon dioxide molecule in the atmosphere and we're going to try to capture one of the one of those interactions so one thing that's pretty interesting let me go ahead and hit pause we discovered that nitrogen dioxide doesn't seem to affect any of the temperature changes on our surface or the ice we saw that in the sim exploration so i'm just going to move carbon dioxide down and make it so the the atmospheric uh, gases are just nitrogen dioxide. I'll change the little eye icon. You can see there are little tiny purple dots. And if I hit play, you'll notice this time that there aren't any yellow dots popping up because nitrogen dioxide doesn't interact with energy arrows as they're entering or exiting Earth's system. Okay, so that's just a little side note that's pretty interesting. But let's go back to nitrogen dioxide down to zero and carbon dioxide all the way up to 500 parts per million. Okay, so sometimes it helps to choose an energy arrow that looks like it's maybe just about to interact with some gas. I feel like this is a promising 
thing. It looks like it might. There's a whole row of carbon dioxide gas is just waiting for it. So let's change this to 0.5. I want to go nice and slow so we can see this interaction. If it happens, fingers crossed. Okay, press play. Oh, it escaped. Okay, so let's try a different one. I'm going to choose, let's see, this one right here. Oh, we just barely missed out on that one. That's too bad. Okay, I'm going to press this one, and let's see what happens. I'm going to press play, and oh, it's going to escape as well. Do you see what I mean about having to be so patient? Okay, sometimes if you grab one that's like right at Earth's surface, it's got lots of time to travel, although I feel like a lot of my carbon dioxide is over. Yeah, it's all over there. Okay, so let's move that over there, and let's try... Ah, oh, this looks promising. Look at that one. Okay, okay, let's let's hope this is it. Let's try this one and let's see what we get. I cannot believe it that that escaped. Ah, okay, all right. So I think you have a good idea of, of how you're supposed to do this. I wish I could have shown you one interacting, but I, I think instead I have shown you how frustrating it is sometimes to get one. We know they're interacting because we can see those little yellow dots popping up. So you just have to keep trying and trying until you can get three interacting with carbon dioxide. And I want to show you really quickly methane. Okay, so I just moved methane up to 500. I press the little I. I go over here so we can see it. Oh yeah, we can see that that just interacted with it. Wish we had caught that arrow. If I hit play, you can see you can see little popping yellow circles, which means that methane gas is interacting with the energy arrows exiting or entering Earth's system. So go off and explore the sim and see what you can discover and try to come up with three methane and three carbon dioxide. I'm going to keep trying as well, try to get some screen screen captures, but I you don't you shouldn't have to just sit here and watch me being frustrated. Instead, you should just go off and be frustrated by yourself. And if you can't use the sim, then just at the next part of this video, I'll show you some screenshots of energy arrows that I was successfully able to capture interacting with either carbon dioxide or methane. But before I send you off to that, I do want to remind you of one quick thing. Besides being patient, it's also important to make sure that you are moving all of the energy, all, sorry, all of the gas molecules that you don't want to explore to zero and the one that you're exploring to 500. Okay, good luck. We'll see you when you come back. Okay, are you ready to talk about your results? I hope that you enjoyed that and it wasn't too frustrating. I was able to collect some data, which I'm pretty excited about. Okay, so this first picture shows, shows an energy arrow interacting with carbon dioxide gas in Earth's atmosphere. It was on its way out, exiting Earth's system, when it interacted with some gas and got redirected, it looks like four times in a row, and on the fourth interaction, it was redirected out to space. So it looks like it was on its way back to Earth's surface, but then it was redirected out, out out into space. And so from this we figure out that when the energy arrow interacts with Earth's atmosphere, specifically with carbon dioxide gas in Earth's atmosphere, it can be redirected. So my second one looks like this. It's very similar. It was on its way out, it interacted with the gas, and it was redirected to space, but in a different pathway than it had been exiting. It would have wanted to just go straight out this way, but instead it was redirected that way. So from this we can see that sometimes it can be redirected like this one was initially back to Earth's surface, and sometimes it is redirected out into space. So it appears to be somewhat random. It could be redirected in any direction, sometimes back to Earth, and sometimes it continues to space in a different um, energy arrow pathway. So this last one was so complicated. So let me show it to you. Whoa, this one's crazy. I actually had to push back the, the gas panel so that I could see what was happening. So I clicked here, like hoping it was going to interact with the gas. And it did. When it did that, it was redirected back to Earth. But before it could get there, it interacted with another uh, carbon dioxide molecule in the atmosphere and then it got redirected it looked like it was going to exit Earth's system but no it got redirected again 
and again and again and again and again after so many times of being frustrated then this huge energy interaction happened and what we can see and i want to point your attention to the the very surface of earth you can see that each one of those circles is showing a time when the energy is getting absorbed by earth's surface so you can see that the energy was reabsorbed by earth's surface so not only was this energy on its way out of Earth's system, but when it got redirected back to the Earth, it was absorbed again, which means that this energy was interacting with the Earth's surface more than one time, absorbing the energy and increasing the Earth's surface temperature. Okay, so one thing that you can do on your note paper is just sort of draw a picture of what you saw but you can just describe the pathway if like that last one we looked at was a little too complicated okay so let's see what we found with methane and i hope you're looking at your own results as well and seeing how they're similar or different from mine and when i did methane the first one i had so let's see where does it start i clicked on it here it immediately interacted with some gas and was redirected to earth's surface where it was absorbed and then eventually was exiting Earth's system again. And so this methane gas here actually redirected this energy arrow back to Earth's surface where it was reabsorbed and then eventually exited Earth's system, but not before leaving behind some of that energy in the Earth system. Okay, so then I did this again and the same thing we saw again, the methane was reabsorbed by Earth's system. And then finally I had another super crazy complex one and look how much of that energy is interacting with the Earth's system. It's getting reabsorbed and it's pulling more and more energy out of the energy arrow. So when it finally leaves, it likely has less energy than when it started. Okay, so we have figured out so many things and it's time for us to write a key concept about what we've discovered. So let's do a key concept fill in the blank and Think of any vocabulary words that you've been learning during this lesson or in previous lessons to see if you can fill in the blank. So blank and blank stop energy from leaving by blank energy that would have blank the system. Okay, so we know that carbon dioxide and methane are the two gases that we've been investigating. So let's start by putting those in here. Carbon dioxide and methane stop energy from leaving. How do they do that? And if you look at your data, you can see that the way that they're doing that is they're redirecting it back to Earth's system. And so that's the third word, redirecting. So carbon dioxide and methane stop energy from leaving by redirecting energy that would have exited the system. Now, sometimes it continues to exit and that's okay, but many times it is redirected back to Earth where it continues to get absorbed by Earth's surface and increase the average temperature and decrease the amount of ice that's on Earth's surface. And so, so now when you hear that carbon dioxide or methane are the things that are causing climate change, you can explain why. You can talk about how it's because they're redirecting energy that would have exited out of Earth's system back to Earth's system. And that allows more and more and more energy to enter Earth's system than is able to exit, which means we're no longer in equilibrium. We have an unequal balance. More energy is entering our system than is able to exit. Okay, this is exciting. And it's time to use all this information that we've been figuring out to help other people understand climate change. Climate change. So Irene Lee has sent this email and here's what it says. Thank you for all your hard work on the subject of climate change these last few weeks. Being able to explain why our climate is changing and why Earth's ice is melting is vital. Today, I'd like you to create a report that explains these climate changes ideas to a general audience. Be sure your writing is clear and includes visuals so people who don't know much about this topic will find it meaningful. WCI, which stands for World Climate Institute, hopes that if people understand, they will take action and support laws that will help the serious problem. Your report is a valuable part of WCI's mission to educate the public so they can better understand this topic. We appreciate your help. So from this email, we, we do understand that when someone isn't exactly clear on the science behind why the ice is melting or why the temperature is changing, 
then they're less likely to, to make changes um, in the way that we're doing things on our planet. And so as you explain this to someone else, what are some of the things that you want to make sure that you capture? So the question we're trying to figure out is, why does temperature increase when the amount of carbon dioxide or methane in the Earth's system increases? And so you have a bunch of words that you can use, atmosphere, carbon dioxide, energy, methane, redirect, surface, temperature, evidence. Try to use every single one of these words in your explanation. I'm super excited that we've been able to figure this out together. And I think that in the next lesson, let's take a look at why carbon dioxide and methane have been increasing over the last 100 years. And as Irene Lee was saying in her message, what kinds of changes can we do as a community to, to affect the amount of methane or carbon dioxide? Okay, I'll see you next time.